All right, it's kind of a gloomy October 5th, 6th, I don't remember. Um, the weather has finally broken, the temperatures are sane. I'm uh, wandering through the forest, well, sort of the woods in my backyard, with this groovy, wonderful mug made by my Uncle Larry Sheeman. Uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll connect you. He makes fabulous stuff. I've got stuff of his that's probably over 50 years old all over the house. So anyway, um, today's episode is uh, about finishing the neck or at least getting close to finishing the neck. If I don't think I'm gonna go all the way to fretting because I'm gonna take it over to Mark's and we're gonna do it there. He's gotta set up this, uh, well, it's, it's nice. <laughs> and uh, maybe start messing about with the pickups then. But for the meantime, here it is. Kent making a neck, hopefully the right way this time. All right, with the neck, it is math time. I've seen so many ways of doing the, uh, the various thicknesses and angles you need for the neck. Um, drawing it on a paper is the same way to go about it, but for some reason I choose to do it this way, which is more difficult, but fun. So, some measurements to know. Um, and hopefully you can see all this because uh, the uh, pencil marks on this uh, this wood, this black limba is a little tricky to see, but, so my headstock, I'm gonna cut the angle right out of this block of wood instead of doing a scarf joint. I'm gonna do a scarf joint one day, but not today. It's a 9 16 headstock thickness, a little volute. At the first fret here, 0.9 inches, and that's calculated from the top of the fretboard to there. And for the 12th fret, it's point, so like I said, it, uh, 0.09 inches there and 0.095 here, from here to here, that's the 12th fret. I'm making a much more sane volute this time, which will make my buddy Mark quite happy because I tend to, in the past, I've gone a little bonkers with that. The other part is the brake angle. This messed with me for about a year before I finally understood the whole, uh, uh, I can, you know, buy templates that mean I'm cutting a neck with a fender style pocket and, uh, you know, I kept ending up having to put shims in my necks. So let's talk about brake angle for a second. If you're building a Fender style guitar and you're using a hard tail or a trem bridge, the height of the bridge makes the string action on the neck pretty much perfect when the neck is mounted flat to the guitar. But if you're using a tunematic style bridge, they're a lot taller. And even at the lowest position, your strings are still gonna be way off the neck. So the way you fix this is you have a break angle. You have an angle that the neck tilts back and it compensates for that extra height. And that's how you get your string action right where it needs to be when you're using something other than a Strat or a Tele style bridge. In the description for this, I'm gonna put a pair of links. Um, one is for Tundra Man's uh, break angle calculator, which is a phenomenal free little web calculator and then I go to my handy dandy uh, uh, triangle calculator website and I put in the angle I need that I got from Tunderman's site. So first I go to Tunderman's calculator and I have to enter the scale length, which is 25 here, then the fret number where the neck joins the body, which in my case is 16, the height of the fingerboard at the neck join, which is a quarter of an inch, and then the height of the bridge. I don't have an increase in top height. So after that, I do the calculation and I get 2.163 degrees for proper string action. So now I got to go to the triangle calculator, plug in that 2.163 degrees into the A angle and 5.1 inches, which is the length of my heel, and hit calculate. And it gives me my 0 0.193 inches, which is the difference in height at the end of the neck 
versus the end of the heel. So I've got my first point at exactly the right depth of the neck pocket. I've got a, a straight line measured at the depth of the neck flush to the body. Uh, I'm just going to ignore the fretboard for the moment. And now I add that 0.193 distance right at the end of the neck, which gives me that 2.163 degree angle. Now I just have to cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the profile first. And then I'll cut the uh, actual neck. Man. I have to darken the line on this side or I'll never see that when I'm going to cut the actual shape out. I usually do at this point is I use the leveling beam to get all my saw marks out and then I'll go and finesse it down to the the pencil line and then start fitting it I actually start fitting it before I go down to the pencil line just in case anything shifted can't stress the need for a leveling beam enough. Um, I can't tell you the number of necks I used to make, used to make, maybe sometimes still do, that lovely, have a lovely hourglass shape because I got carried away in trying to sand uh, to lines and stuff. So this kind of thing really keeps you from making mistakes like that. As long as you're paying attention, which hopefully I am. So what madness is this, you may ask? And you would be right to ask. Um, and this is the kind of madness that happens when you don't take into account the fact that your wonderful, distressed, spalted, punky wood is really hard to level. So, like right here, this little speed, this little spot right here is, is nice and hard and all this stuff is really soft and it's just not level. And what I didn't notice when I was routing the, uh, the, the neck pocket is that it was kicking my template at a little bit of an angle. So even though the, uh, even though the neck itself that I just finished is spot on perfect. When it hits the bottom, it kind of does this sort of, it's, it's wobbly. It's not, it's not perfect. So I have to figure out how to make <laughs> the neck pocket flat. So what I'm going to do is I got these, <laughs> this neck that I didn't use. And another piece of the uh, the maple or whatever from that bit, I have clamped into my router fence and locked it down and clamped this guy here and clamped the body down. And I'm going to just use this, which is just, I don't know, maybe just a half a millimeter taller than, to, than the guitar as a sled. And I'm just going to go in and take off just the tiniest little bit, maybe a mil and flatten this whole thing out. And hopefully it won't screw everything up because there is potential for disaster. But uh, it should work, <laughs> I think. Let's find out.
crisis averted. <laughs> that was a little nerve wracking. The bonus thing was it actually uh, tucked the uh, the neck down a little closer to the top, so uh, right where the fretboard will meet with the body, it's right flush with the body right here. Huzzah! All right, so uh, as much as I uh, enjoy trying to figure out uh, when there's a mistake how to fix it, that one I didn't enjoy as much until I figured out how to fix it, and it was fun. All right, so I need to notch out the, uh, the access hole for the truss rod and the fretboard, and I can glue that up. That's exciting. All right, so I got my center line. So it's just on the inside of six thirty seconds of an inch. That's there and there. And now So we need the whole axis hole to be a half inch. So I could do it a couple ways. And I think I'm gonna do this time, it's something I haven't done before, is I'm gonna drill a couple holes and then just file out the center before I've like chiseled out the whole, the whole thing. And not having worked with this wood before, I don't wanna run into some strange chipping behavior. I don't know, that might be too big. Six millimeter might be too big. Yeah, let me start with that and I can always gently file it a little bit bigger. All right, let's go to the drill press and see what happens.
got the binding slot cut, slot, recess, words to that effect. So uh, it's getting pretty good. Um, I think uh, <laughs> I think neck number two is doing what needs to be done uh, for a neck. And with that, it's a great place to end this episode. Next one will be up in about a week. Gonna finish all the fiddly bits on the neck up to fretting. I think I'm gonna do the fretting in another episode. And uh, then it's getting to be a matter of time before assembly starts to happen, which is exciting. When will that be? Pretty soon. What does that mean? It's anybody's guess. Thanks for watching. See you next time.